And good afternoon. Uh, this is the Central Florida Computer Society Special Interest Group for Windows, or the Windows Special Interest Group, sometimes known as WinSIG. My name is Huey Poplock. I'm in Bradenton, Florida, while the meeting is in Castleberry, Florida. For those uh, who uh, see the recording of this, uh, may not realize, but we're about 120 miles apart. I'm doing this from my home. Uh, I moved from the Orlando area about a year and a half ago, but continue to do the Windows SIG uh, remotely. So uh, we welcome you. Today is Sunday, July 10th, 2016, and uh, we have now uh, started uh, uh, an, another one of our SIG recordings and meetings. And let's get started. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I can close this down. And... Uh, I can close this off, I guess, and I'll move this to the center. I'll come back to this in a moment. Let me enlarge it. Okay, this is the Huey, uh, Huey.net website, and at the Huey.web, uh, there is an area called WinSig, and at Win and the WinSig, there are meeting notes. Let me uh, make that a little bit smaller here for a moment. So you can see that I have the notes going back to 2008. If we go to the 2016 meetings, you'll see I've got them listed from uh, January through, uh, through July. And when we look at June's, and I'll make this now bigger. Uh, you'll notice that I have all of the items from the June meeting. That was last month's meeting listed and all of these are links to articles that I use to do for the discussion and at the bottom I've added the video of the meeting so if you didn't see or weren't present for last month's meeting if you'll go to that page all you have to do is click on it and it will take you to YouTube and the uh, uh, the video and it's embedded on the page so you don't even have to go to YouTube it will go to YouTube for you and play that video. And after I uh, get the video back for this session, I'll do the same for the July meeting. So we're gonna go ahead and close that one up. And now we're in the July meeting notes. And these are my plans for today. Uh, I found a couple of more that I was going to add uh, last night or this morning, and I decided, no, I think we've got too many on there now. Uh, hopefully I'll save them for next month. However, next month uh, we should have the uh, uh, the beginning of August, I, actually, I believe it's August 2nd, should be the update to Windows 10, the anniversary. So there'll be a lot of new and exciting pieces and parts to Windows 10 coming uh, between now and our next meeting. And hopefully I'll have a list of some of those and be able to either demonstrate or talk about some of the uh, uh, new features or changed features in Windows 10 that will be coming about with the anniversary. Now, in order to get the anniversary uh, update to Windows 10, you have to have Windows 10 installed. And uh, if you wait until after July 29th, which is 19 days away, uh, it will no longer be a free update. But Ewing? Yes. Ewing? Yes. No, it's on now. I just turned it on. Something's the matter. What's the problem? I just heard you, Jack. What's what did you need? Are you still with me, Jack? I'm guessing you are. Jack, are you there? Well, I'll continue. Hopefully you'll catch up with me if you're not. Anyway, um, the new, uh, the free update to Windows 10 from Windows 7 or Windows 8.1 expires on July 29th and will no longer be free. It will then go to, I believe it's $119. I did see somewhere where it may be $99.99. Uh, but it's going to be somewhere between $100 and $120 to do the upgrade if you wait past the 29th of this month. Okay, let's get started. 
13 Windows Diagnostic Tools to Check Your PC's Health. Now, these aren't just for Windows 10. This would be any version of Windows or most of the recent versions anyway. Uh, so let's look at some of these. These are system diagnostics, uh, computer problems that can be a huge pain, and sometimes you just need to uh, find out uh, which hardware you're using and find out some information. Uh, the first one they mentioned is something called CPU-Z, and uh, there is a screen capture of it. I'll make that a little bit larger. Uh, you can see it gives a lot of information, uh, but it's also good when you forget which components you have installed, especially if you built your own PC, or if you purchased one, you may not know what the components are or came with it, and this program will tell you what it is. There's also a performance monitor. As in older versions of the operating system, Windows 10 does have a performance monitor, uh, but it, uh, it now exists as an app. And once it's launched, uh, you can look at the sidebar under monitoring tools, and you should see the performance monitor, and it'll look something like this. So it will give you some information of what's going on in your computer. Uh, by default, the monitor only shows a percent of processor time, which displays how much your CPU is used at any given time. But you can add more counters, such as disk usage, energy use, page file size, search index size, and more. Some of this is in older versions of Windows, but not all of it. Then there's the readability monitor. Uh, it's a hidden tool that's been around since Vista, uh, yet many people have never even heard of it. It's in the control panel under system and security, uh, security and maintenance, maintenance, and then view reliability history. And it looks something similar to this. And it will give you uh, uh, any problems that you're, uh, that you may have. Some of these tools are ones that the scammers use to show you because normally you will find errors in some of these uh, uh, monitors because it's normal. Sometimes there are hiccups in the, in the everyday use of your computer and so it's not something to be concerned about unless uh, it's happening a lot or it's a, something that shouldn't be happening and you're and you're actually looking to see what those, what's causing that problem. So you'll see a history of your system and a timeline of events and errors. Uh, if, if your system is crashing a lot, this is a good place to look because you can select the error and then try to check for a solution. And you'll see right here where I think you can see my mouse, it says check for a solution. And if you click on that, it will tell you uh, what you can do. Now, there's network diagnostics, too. Whether you're using Wi-Fi or Ethernet, there's a good chance you're going to run into some network problems. And so here are some pro programs for that. One is a Wi-Fi analyzer. It's a free tool that does exactly what the name says. It analyzes your Wi-Fi network's setup to see whether your wireless channel is interfering with other nearby Wi-Fi networks. Uh, you might have to have some idea what this is talking about. Uh, the average user it may be confusing to but uh, at least you can get some ideas you might want to do some screen captures and print them out and cap and and take them to somebody or show them to somebody that does have an idea what what's going on to see if uh, they might be able to help troubleshoot if you're having issues with your wi-fi uh angry ip scanner is a, a nice tool to have in a nutshell it scans your network to see which ip addresses and ports are being used by which devices, and uh, it will look something like this, and you can use it at home to see how many devices are connected to your network. You're going to be surprised. You're, more and more items uh, that are, we're buying now picks up Wi-Fi signals. Your TV may be using some Wi-Fi signals. If you've got a Roku box, it's using a Wi-Fi port. Uh, if you've got a... a, a uh, an Amazon, uh, uh, the Alexa, the Amazon Echo, it's using uh, Wi-Fi. You may have a headset that's using Wi-Fi. You may have a phone that you're using, uh, a Wi-Fi-based phone, uh, VOIP phone. So it could be a number of things. Uh, 
and it's using your Wi-Fi, and this will give you a heads up on what those are. Uh, data drive diagnostics, your crystal disk info. Uh, ever wondered what your hard disk drive or solid state drive was, whether it's in good condition or not? It's not easy to find out, especially with the newer SSDs can die before you even realize something's wrong. Well, the crystal disk info comes into play, and it will give you some information about your drive and uh, what the health status is, what problems it may be experiencing. Uh, Winder Stat is another program. Uh, it's something you probably ought to have on your computer. Uh, it stands for Windows Directory Statistics and does exactly what it says. And I think I've demonstrated this uh, in one of the SIG meetings, or I've shown it, because I know that I re remember that uh, uh, graphic that's, that's showing here. Then there's some memory diagnostics, your resource monitor, uh, Windows has a feature called a resource monitor, which is implemented back in Vista, and you'll be able to launch it through Task Manager, but now it's, sep it's a separate app in Windows 10, and you can launch it through the Start menu. But you might want to take a look at what resources are, are being used and how much resources it's using. Uh, Windows Memory Diagnostics. Did you know Windows actually has a built-in tool that can physically test your RAM modules? to check to see if they're free of errors. If it's an app called Windows Memory Diagnostic. And uh, uh, that's how you, uh, what it looks like. And using it uh, will restart your computer on boot up the tool, will run several tests on your RAM. And if it encounters any errors or failures, it's it, it'll do its best to let you know which, modules, uh, which module is the culprit. And you should replace it as soon as possible. Then there's some screen diagnostics, J screen fix. Uh, stuck pixel is a bright dot of color that fails to update when a neighboring pixel changes. Uh, uh, stuck pixels are most noticeable when the rest of the screen is black. A J fix, J screen fix can repair most stuck pixels in less than less than ten minutes. Not sure how it works, but if it works, that will solve that issue for you. Then you've got some malware di diagnostics, uh, AWD Cleaner. Not many people know about AWD Cleaner, which is a shame because, according to this article, uh, it deserves more recognition. It's just simple malware scanner, but it's fast, efficient, and free. And uh, uh, obviously, any, that's what you want to ask for. It's mainly designed to target malware that comes bundled with installer files, so it detects adware, toolbars, unwanted programs, um, browser hijackers, and so on. And, of course, malware bytes, with, which a lot of us use and we've talked about at meetings. Uh, you've talked about at meetings. Uh, I've talked about it, and I know many of you use it to check your computer, and I use it a lot of times with my neighbors. It solves issues they're having with their computer because it's usually some something that's installed on their computer or something that's running in the background, and Malwarebytes will find it and delete it. So uh, that's a program you should have, and you don't have to have it running all the time. You can run it uh, every couple of weeks or whenever you're having an issue, uh, and it's free, or it's uh, for the advanced features, it's $25 a year. Then there's one called ClamWin. Uh, may look primitive, but uh, don't let that fool you. It's one of the best free virus scanners currently avail available. So that's another one to look at. So how healthy is your PC? And that's pretty much that article. So some good tools to use. And again, that's the 13 Windows diagnostic tools to check your PC's health. Okay. If you're on the web and you get to a website and it's, and it's, is it's down, but is it? Maybe it's something in your computer. Somebody else might be getting to it, but you can't. So what you, what you can do is this article is from PC World, and they usually start running a video. Let's see if they do. I think I've got something installed that stops that. Hopefully it will. But come on. Uh, Google Analytics can be yeah, overwhelming. Run. Let me it shut gives that you off. a huge amount of data. The one thing I don't like and about then, some of these magazine websites, they have videos that start running automatically. 
And if you open several pages at once, you got three or four things playing in the background. You got to go find them. Okay, let me make this larger. Internet access is a glorious thing, but sometimes it doesn't work. So what can you do? Well, one of the things you can do is, is the old school ping, and that is just go to a DOS prompt, and then just type in whatever, uh, and then you want to type in ping, and then type in the address in which you're trying to get to, whether let's say it's facebook.com or google.com. Uh, when you do, let's see, I don't know whether this will work or not, but let's try it anyway. Uh, uh, CMD, command prompt. Hopefully you can see that box is small. Uh, let's see if I can make that bigger. I don't know whether I can make the fonts bigger or not. No. I think there is a way to do that, but no. Anyway, what you do is you just type in ping. Uh, let's see, ping, and then space, and then say facebook.com. And what it's doing, it's showing you all of the stops it has to make in order to get to Facebook and how many times, how long it took. Let's see if I do a full screen, if that'll help. No, it doesn't make the icons any, or it doesn't make the text any bigger. So we'll come back. Anyway, it took 95 seconds. It did get there, and it didn't have any hiccups on the way. But if, if the w website was down, you would see uh, it, it, it would time out and wouldn't get there. And so what you want to do is that might be one of the first things that you try if you can't get to a website you're trying to get to try to ping it. If it gets there, then at least it's getting to the website. But uh, what if it's you? What, what are some things you can do? Uh, there, you might have something uh, uh, like ad, you might have an ad blocker on. You might have uh, uh, something. It could be uh, uh, some settings. It could be a virus that you have. It could be a number of things. So th the best way, again, is the old school ping. But there's also another site, and I don't have it in my notes, but let's go find it. It's called uh, Just, let's see, I've got it up here. Is Just Me, I believe. Do I have it? Yeah, right here. There's a website. It's called Down for Everyone or JustMe.com. And what you do is you type in the address that you want to check. <coughs> And press enter. And if people are getting through and it gets through, then it's going to say, well, you can't get to it, but I can. So therefore, it's you. It's not down. So that's a website that you might want to check. It's down for everyone or just me. Let me make that. Let's see if I can make you know, that makes this all bigger, but... Uh, it's down for everyone or just me dot com uh, or is up dot me is a shortened version of it is up dot me and when you click on that it takes you to the same place is up dot me so you might want to remember that as well okay let's move on to our next item which identify edited JPEGs with JPEG Snoop. When you take a picture on your camera or with your iPhone, your iPad, your, your Android phone, your Android pad, whenever you take a digital picture, certain information go with that picture. And there is a program called JPEG Snoop. When you go to the JPEG or you go to the program or to the file, it'll give you some information about it. Well, I've got a picture. I've got Jason Snoop up and running. And let's see if I can make this bigger. I don't know whether it'll go bigger or not. It doesn't. I am sorry about that. Let's see if there's a view. Zoom. There we go. Zoom in. Some programs have this set for us. Let's let us do it and some don't. 
25, let's go to 100%. All right, it zooms in on the picture, but not so much on the information, I guess. Let's try one more. Now that's image zoom. That's image zoom. Okay, well, anyway, let's uh, take the image back out. And it didn't make the text any bigger. Uh, let's see. Make it back down here so we can see what the, this is the picture. Whoops. I'll bring this up. This is the picture that I took along the beach. And when I look at the information that's associated with that, it's called the XDIF, X I, I'm sorry, EXIF information. It gives me a lot of information. This was taken with my iPad, Apple iPad Air, and it gives some information about the picture. It gives me the fact that it's, it was a JPEG. It gives me the fact that it was a normal program. It also tells me the flash didn't fire. In other words, I didn't have flash on. Uh, it's got some other information, which uh, right now we don't need to know anything about. Uh, but it's a directly photographed image, uh, auto exposure, auto white balance, and so on. But it also gives me the GPS findings. And I save those in a file and uh, let's see this is jpeg 250 and if it's in this kind of a format if i then open or go to the browser and go to google and go to maps now well, let's we can just do it here and then it'll say go to maps That's exactly where I was when I took that picture. So it gave me the coordinates, uh, latitude and longitude, and showed me right where, the, right where I was, which was at the Moose Lodge on Loyal Order of the Moose, and that's where I was, and that's where I took that picture. Now, my camera doesn't have GPS built into it, so it doesn't give me that information. Uh, however, I did take one with my iPhone, and that uh, uh, picture is here. We'll just do one more here, open image. And I took this a couple of years ago. Here's the picture. It happens to be sideways here. Uh, and that's what the picture looked like. It was just before a Wawa opened up. But where was that Wawa that I took that picture of? It was at this latitude and longitude, and I have that in my in the format that we need for Google. And when we come over here, we'll put that here. Oops, here. Close that, and we'll put that in there. And some of you may recognize that as the Wawa dog track and 1792. And that was when it was being built, the, the sign was set at zero cents uh, for the gas. And so I took a picture of that. So it, I was able to not only take the picture, but now I know where I took it. And so can anyone else. Now, there are some, some things that you want to be careful of. You take pictures at your home and then post them on the web, it's liable to give where your address is, where you're physically located. However, Facebook is really good about this, and the, uh, Facebook strips that information off. So when you download a picture from Facebook, there will not be uh, a GPS uh, information with that picture, even if there was when you uploaded it. So people can't locate you that way. But if you put it on a website, if you do it in a in other places, or if you put it in your collection, let's say on, uh, uh, on where some of the collections go, it may be included with your picture. You might want to check on that before you post some certain pictures so somebody can actually figure out where you took that picture. Uh, another thing that, that you can tell with this 
Yeah, so let me open up one other picture. It's taking a little bit longer than I had hoped, but I think this is a, a really good program. Now, I took uh, a picture and I cropped it. Let's see, cropped and edited. Let's take this one and say open. I cropped this picture. You can see it below, and you'll notice somewhere down here, it does say that it was edited. Directly photoed. Uh, well, I did find it somewhere. It shows what camera it was taken, and it should tell you that it was edited by uh, uh, a directly photographed image, normal process. Well, being cropped, I guess it doesn't consider that it was uh, edited, but one of these I, I know I made. Let's see. I got it right here just so we don't take too much time here. Uh, yeah, this one right here. This was one I edited besides cropping, and you'll see that it knew that I did this with Photoshop Elements 12.0. So when you edit a program, so if someone sends you a picture, you might want to, and you want to know whether it's been edited or not, you can go in using this program and find out whether it's been edited. Okay, let's... Uh, Get out of here and come back to our notes. Hopefully there are no questions on that. And make sure that you're still on. Yep. Um, okay, some common misconceptions about wireless networks. Let's see, no, we're farther down than we want to be here. Uh, let's see, identify and 25 browser add-ons for, these are some browser add-ons. And this is PC World, so we're probably going to have a video here that's going to start. Uh, oh, this is a slideshow, so let's full screen this. I don't like these slideshows. What they do is they, they take a series of pictures. Instead of putting them all on one page, they can have more advertisements by having a separate page for each picture. So making the web a better place. Here's some add-ons and extensions for browsers. Uh, I'll try to get through these quickly, although... Uh, this is a Lazarus form recovery. Uh, we've all been there. You start filling out a form online, and then you have to leave it and come back to it later, and certain things are left out, and you've got to turn around and fill them back in again. This program helps you with that. Um, let's see. And this works with Chrome or Firefox. A web clipping and annotation. Uh, this works with Chrome, Firefox, and Internet Explorer. Uh, tons of extensions let you grab screenshots of web pages. Uh, topping the list includes uh, OneNote Clipper and Evernote. And this is uBlock. Uh, this is an uh, AdBlock uh, Plus was once the gold standard for stopping ads from intruding on your browsing experience. But many people have turned sour on the extension thanks to its advertising whitelist that allowed some ads through. Or here's another one that does sim something similar. It's called uBlock. It works on Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. Here's one called HTTPS Everywhere. Runs on Chrome, Firefox, and Opera. Uh, supports SSL and L uh, TLS encryption. Uh, and uh, password managers, there are several that will work with Chrome, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Opera, and Safari, Dashlane, LastPass. Uh, LastPass did have a security breach, but apparently it's been fixed. Uh, Social Fixer for Facebook uh, works for Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and Safari. Uh, doesn't do, it doesn't do just one thing. It's more like a toolbox. Uh, some of the primary features it adds by default includes a tabbed news view, uh, news feed, easily sort through the, and read unread items, a scrolling list of all your pages. I, hmm, that sounds like something I may take a look at this one. Uh, and a full-size preview of images whenever you hover over them. A social fixture doesn't show up in your Chrome browser the way the extensions typically do. Instead, it appears as a new option whenever you log into Facebook. Uh, I happen to use the, the uh, browser uh, 
entry into looking at Facebook instead of the Facebook apps. I find it, I control it better and there are more, there are more things that it does. Uh, so I prefer that uh, even on my uh, iPhone. Uh, bad, uh, privacy Badger uh, from the Electronic uh, Frontier Foundation, the EFF. It's an aggressive privacy protection tool that destroys third-party cookies and other trackers that try to follow you across the web. The extension sends a do not track header request to every web page you visit. Unfortunately, many sites and advertisers choose to ignore that, uh, but it might uh, at least keep some uh, off your computer or away from it. Okay, go to the next. Tunnel Bear. If you need a VPN but don't want to use a desktop app, uh, that sometimes can be slow to start up. Tunnel Bear's Chrome extension, this works under Chrome only, uh, and works with Chromebooks if you have one. Instead of a true blue VPN, Tunnel Bear's extension uses a proxy that affects only uh, your web browser and may be ineffective to some region blocking sites such as Hulu. Vimium. Uh, takes some inspiration from Vim, the keyboard navigation centric plain text editor. And you can see that it does some things and you can use your keyboard and so on. It allows you to do almost all of your web browsing and navigation without or at least rarely taking your hands off the home row of your keyboard. Okay, let's go to next. There we go. Stream keys. It works in Chrome. Uh, it's another keyboard shortcut, shortcut extension, but designed specifically for more than 50 online music players, including YouTube. Netflix, uh, Netflix enhancer, uh, especially with the new uh, mobile style interface on PCs. Uh, there's so much more movie information. It's, so this uh, uh, enhances your uh, watching a movie on Netflix and your computer. Tab colors, you're going to add colors. Use, this is in Firefox that it works with. It can give you tabs at the top instead of just the normal tabs like I've got uh, at the top of this screen. Uh, open link and silent tab. tab. Uh, this add-on is great for Firefox users who lack uh, the upcoming Chrome feature that will stop certain auto-playing videos. Uh, so that this may stop the PC world of videos that start automatically on me. Tab Grenade, another helpful add-on for managing multiple tabs. It allows you to bookmark a list of tabs and keep them handy for when you need them. To start, you just open a bunch of tabs. Let's say there are six, and then click the Tab Grenade icon. All six tabs disappear and a single tab, rema tab remains with a list of links to all the web pages you just had open. Then you need to open one of the pages. You can just click on the link. Nice extra, nice tool to have. Uh, Focus uh, for Firefox and Chrome. It's an utterly fantastic tool for anyone who wants to refer to a specific block of text on a web page. Just highlight the text and Focus uses JavaScript magic to darken the rest of the page so only that specific block of text stands out. Uh, download plan. Uh, you found an absolutely killer app that you want on your computer, computer, but you're on a public Wi-Fi hotspot with an unbelievably slow connection. So what do you do? You bookmark the page and come back later, not with download plan installed. All you have to do is schedule the download for a later time, and the add-on takes care of the rest. No script. You can't have a hassle-free toolbox without mentioning this classic. No script protects you from any malicious scripts that can be used for clickjacking and cross-site scripting attacks. Uh, the downside is that no script can sometimes prevent a page from functioning properly. That works with Firefox. This is also Firefox. Uh, ever meant to visit Google.com, but you type in Google.co instead? 
This add-on tries to help you avoid those stupid moments by fixing any mistypes. You can also require the add-on to confirm a change before correcting a URL and add custom correction because sometimes you, uh, you don't want to go to the wrong page by mistake. Uh, Dropbox for Gmail. If you use uh, Outlook.com, you've got a deep integration with OneDrive. If you use Gmail, there's easy access to Google Drive, but Dropbox users are out of luck, or at least they were until February. Dropbox for Gmail adds cloud storage service as an icon for your Gmail a Compose window in Chrome. This works for Chrome. Click it, and you can add links to your Dropbox files in your message and save attachments you receive via email directly to Dropbox. Uh, URL alias, let me just quickly go through the remainder of these. Uh, Fire gestures, this is for Firefox. Uh, close and forget, uh, that helps you uh, clean off your uh, history. No more iTunes. And we should be right just about the end. X marks. Pretty much every major browser has its own bookmarking system and that syncs your saved sites uh, along the browser. But if you're a multiple browser type, this syncs them all with uh, that way. And then finally, push bullet uh, isn't just a browser extension. It's a service that lets you send data between your Android or iOS device and your PC. So those are some add-ons to... Uh, your browsers, uh, depending on whether you're using Chrome, Firefox, IE, uh, or others, and some of them work, uh, and, and you may find one that's similar to it for your browser as well. <clears throat> okay, 10 common misconceptions about wireless networks. And I thought there were some Good points in this article. Uh, this came from Make Use Of, which has a lot of really good articles. I think I have several this month from there. Uh, wire, wireless networks aren't secure. What it should actually say is that wireless networks aren't as secure as wired networks. While this is true, it will be a difficult point to argue against. Uh, but if the question shouldn't shouldn't be which is more secure, maybe it should be whether Wi-Fi is secure enough. And to that question, it depends. Uh, why are wired networks? I happen to be on wired network right now. Number one, it's faster. And two, it's more secure because no one can just pick it out of the air. Uh, you should disable your router's DHCP server, uh, limit your router's IP address pool. These are just some suggestions. There's a, that's a video. You might want to take a look at it. Uh, more antenna equals better speeds. Uh, that's a myth. One of the most persistent myths is that the more antennas is always better. All antennas aren't created equals. Some antennas are even vis aren't even visible. For example, the new Google OnHub router doesn't even have an external antenna. Uh, so when it comes to routers, it's not the number of antennas, but how you use them. So you might want to take a look at this article about that. And then my ISP is cheating me out of the speed I pay for. Uh, and many times uh, you think you're paying for faster than what you're getting, but most of the time you're, you're doing well. Uh, one way to check is you go to speedtest.net. Be careful when you run speedtest.net. Now, don't forget we're streaming video at the same time, so it's certainly not going to be as fast as it normally would be. It chooses a nearby uh, test site, but you can change that. If you just put your mouse over it, you can uh, move around within the map or go to another state or across the country. But I'm going to take the one that it suggests. And make sure you click on Begin Test. If you look on the page, and I, because I've got an ad blocker, a lot of the ads are gone. <laughs> Excuse me. This website has a lot of, uh, a lot of ads, and you've got to be careful that you don't click 
a button for one of the ads. You want the one that says begin test. And then watch what we get. And you can see that it's doing it over a period of time uh, using pings. This is my download speed. Download is always faster than upload. I have a download speed of 228.48 megabits per second. I think I pay for the 50 speed. So I get well above it when I'm wired, especially when I'm wired. My upload speed is going to be uh, somewhere around 17, eight, some, somewhere between 17 and 18, seven, almost 17 and a half. Uh, upload, because you don't upload nearly as much as you download. Uh, and I am paying, I believe it's 50 down and 10 up is what I actually pay for. And because I'm wired. When I do the wireless, I found that I run probably around 100 and something uh, for download and upload to about 15. Uh, and on my laptop, uh, I'll run that. And sometimes on my iPad and iPhone, I run around oh, 30, 30 to 50 download and upload around 10. So speedtest.net is a website you want to take a look at. Uh, and make sure you're getting the speeds that you're supposed to be getting. Uh, increasing transmit power and improves speed or coverage. These are myths, don't forget. And so this article is a good one to take a look at. I'm not going to spend any more time on it. I'll just go down to the bottom. There are some videos on the page. Uh, and it also talks about the 5 gigahertz versus the 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, it's not always faster. But I have found using my iPad and my iPhone, a lot of times the 5 gigahertz is faster. But not all Wi-Fi enabled products have the 5 gigahertz. And sometimes the 5 gigahertz is not faster. So you'll have to you know, check and see what, what your, how your system is run the speed test. OK, potentially unwanted programs. How are we doing for time? I've got about 10 minutes. Uh, any questions at this point, uh, Jack, before I continue? No, we're all right. And that's what we just figured, about 10 minutes to 2.30, OK? OK, great. Uh, many of you run malware bytes, and it talks a lot about pups or potentially unwanted programs. And you don't know what they are, and you don't understand what it is. And this article from Emisoft, which happens to be the antivirus that I use on my main machine, and it's an anti-malware program. Uh, but they do a uh, uh, a blog with a lot of information about uh, malware and viruses and so on. This article from June twentieth, just a couple of weeks ago talks about the potentially unwanted programs, the pups, and what you need to know about them. Uh, you can see a particular page that I've seen this many times when I go to people's homes to work on their computer. I open up their browser, and it looks something like this with all of these different uh, toolbars installed. And most of them are potentially unwanted programs. And so why do pups exist? To earn revenue for software developers who are providing their software for free. For each successfully installed browser toolbar, for instance, a freeware maker earns about $2. Some pups exist just to make cash without ever providing anything useful to you. How do you get one or 10 of them? A pup's behavior is usually outlined in a EULA or end user license agreement. That is a really long document that appears while you're going through all of the installation windows, happily clicking it to accept to get to the end of it all. But this seemingly useless directory of uh, legal speak lists out a program's intentions. Pups require your approval via that accept, that accept button in order to be installed. They count on you improving, approving the download yourself. This protects the software developers from any legal action. They rely on your speed 
to get through the installation process and expect that you won't read the EULA before scrolling immediately to the bottom and hitting whatever so sad to satisfy the accept. So be careful when you're installing a program. Watch what it's in saying, what it's saying it's going to do, and what you're accepting. In many cases, those programs that break your computer were installed with your permission. They weren't installed for any other reason except for you were installing something you wanted and didn't read that EULA, which then asked you permission to install that other program, that browser uh, uh, menu, that browser add-on, or some other program on your system. So how do they get into your system? Like Christmas paper on your shiny new toy, pups are wrapped around your downloads, and, and not only from the small freeware vendors, but some of the big vendors. Adobe is one. Now, when you install Adobe, be careful. They're going, they may want to install something else. Uh, they want you to approve auto updates so that they can add things in. Uh, when you install Skype, make Bing your search engine and MSN your homepage. And when you, do, when you install, that's uh, what happens. And all of a sudden now, Bing comes up with a, uh, for your searches. Uh, Java setup. Offer free, offer to, to the install a free browser add-on from Ask. And now you get a, a toolbar from, <coughs> from Ask when you install uh, Java from Oracle. So there's uh, lots of programs uh, uh, that do that when you install them. Another way that pups find their way into your computer is through download portals. Those sites you visit to update your Adobe products or to find decent, uh, decent media player. Most portals claim to offer clean and safe downloads. However, trusting any download portal has become risky due to uh, litters of bundle pups teamed with software reviews on the site that don't quite seem legit. So when you go to download.com, for instance, we researched how many pups were tangled with the 50 most popular applications on download.com. 31 out of the 50 bundled pups with them. Shocked by the results, we decided to look into the habits of the 10 most popular download portals other than download.com and see if any of them were safe. We downloaded their top 10 most popular applications and noted exactly how much crapware came with them. And so there's an article that you might want to click on that, Mind the Pup, Top Download Portals to Avoid, is a good article that's linked in this article that you might want to take a look at and stay away from those places to download. And some software vendors automatically take you to those portals because they get paid for that. So even though it's freeware, and you're clicking on the website of the software developer, sometimes they automatically take you to something like download.com. So just be careful. Also, be careful with the buttons that you have. It'll look like something like this, and you don't know which one of those actually will download the program you want. You get all kinds of stuff that's not really what you're looking for. So just be careful. Downloading one program can give you six pups and so on. Uh, who benefits from the pups? The software vendors. Uh, they get money from the pup developers or creators of adware for each install. Uh, download portal. The download portal gets money for the pups. Uh, they install through their installer, the wrapper, the bright green download now button. The download vendor is generally not involved or benefiting. And then pups with a bit of uh, camaraderie. Some pups work together to install each other's products and pay each other in the process. So here's where it gets scary. In recent development in the pupware is the use of rootkits, an infection that hides itself, uh, its own data and other files that they cannot be seen by you or, your, or the operating system, intercepting and receiving messages from your computer and it redirects information or reports back to the mothership, whatever it wants. The use of rootkits and adware is blurring the lines between merely unwanted junk and active malware. So uh, good article to read and save and share with your friends. I won't go through uh, more of that. 
Uh, the next item, and this will be our final one, is TextPads, a plain text editor in your browser. So we're in the browser. And a TextPads, a plain text editor in your browser. Sometimes you just need to jot something down quickly without fumbling. I happen to have down here in my, uh, uh, in my taskbar, I have Notepad, and I just open it up and then have it, and I can move it around and have it available. And that's what I use for a text editor to quickly jot things down, copy and paste. But there's also a way you can do it through your website, and that's through TextPad. And you just start writing. So let's go back. Uh, I've got a, a, a web page. I've, I'm sorry, I got a button on here. So let's go ahead and uh, we were here. Now I have the text pad, which opened up in a different page. And so I can start writing. So I can jot notes. Note. I can come back to this page and let's say uh, there's something here that I want to copy. I do a control C, come back over to text pad, control V, and there it is. So that's uh, a, a website that's, uh, what I've done is I created a button. I've got it here uh, and I just open it in a new tab and I'm ready to go. And it actually keeps and remembers what I had already written the last time. And so it's just, a t and then uh, you can put a file name in and then actually save it. And so we, we didn't get halfway through, but there's more items here that in your spare time uh, uh, might be an idea to uh, take a look at some, especially the Windows stuff. Next month, uh, remember, we're going to be talking about the uh, Windows 10 anniversary version which will be released on on uh, august 2nd so hopefully it'll give me a week or so to uh, look it over and, and gather some articles on what's new what's different what's changed what's good what's bad and so on and with that note uh i'll take any questions okay here we were back on the microphone okay you have any questions well, what's this website What's your website, Huey? Huey.net, H-E-W-I-E.net. And just go to the WinSig button. Any other questions? On that, uh, that item that you just talked about on uh, root kits and everything that's in there, mm -hmm. uh, I know malware bites... Uh, put a root kit preventer in there because I did the beta on that about a year ago. And then they added it into their regular malware bytes. I mean, you won't see it anywhere, but it's in there. I just that's, if, that, that's if you're running the version that runs in the background. Most, yeah. most yeah. people run the free version and, and just run it, have it do its uh, thing, yeah. and then yeah. close it. So it, it, don't think you're covered with it. No. Uh, in most cases, you're not. Yeah. You have the paid version, is that correct? Yeah, but if you run the free version once a week, it'll go through and look for the root kits again. That's, yeah. Yes. In other words, it's got to be done manually, but it's in the program. Okay, great. And right, and right now, the other thing they put in there is the uh, uh, that prevention to prevent the uh, the block. What is, what is that? The, the ad blocker? No, 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 not the ad oh, blocker. Oh, you're talking about ransomware. Ransomware. They also have a thing that they put in there for ransomware. It's a separate program, and it's free. Okay. The thing you have to watch with ransomware is, is they're changing those things on a daily basis, and mm -hmm. so you really need to be updating and checking for that on a regular, a lot. Because right. once they're in there, and I, I had one person that had ransomware on their computer, they couldn't. They couldn't log into the computer whatsoever. We ended up having to go back to factory fresh, install everything from scratch. Right. You're lucky, you're lucky you're lucky with that. 
Yeah. Malware bytes might be one program. Well, yeah. Uh, but you've got to be able to get into your computer, and uh, ransomware will lock you out at the login screen. Yeah, but what Nick said was malware bytes might be one one program to pay for, and I pay for it, and yeah. I have two computers. I think it costs me $29 for the year, and believe me, it runs in the background, and I'm happy with it. Well, that $29 was a lot cheaper for the year than the one time I had to go in and, and redo somebody's computer from scratch. So That's the way I thought. Yeah. That's what it's, I it's good insurance. Okay. Thank you very much, Huey. Okay. We're going we're gonna to switch over to Ken now. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop the recording and get out of here. So thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next month. Okay, very good. Thanks, Huey. Take five? Yeah, when we take five, we'll get a chance to check it. I need one more question. You need